Alright folks, guys, for 2014 Subaru. It's got the big 2.5. It's a Forester. It's not a Forester. It's an Outback. And i got a question for you folks. And that question is, who the heck was here? That's not the question, but this nut and bolt is not supposed to be here. Just FYI. <laughs> this should be a uh, Christmas tree fastener, but somebody uh, put a nut and a bolt there. Um, my question is, is how does your shop handle intermittents? In the case of the Subaru, it's got about a buck of nine on it, so pretty low mileage. Um, one owner, two drivers, no kids driving the car, for what it's worth. Um, their complaint is intermittent stalling or low idle. Uh, and typically, it goes like this, they're driving along, they're having fun, they went to the Walmart. So that distance from us to the Walmart or any other store for that matter is about, you know, a solid 20 minute, 25 minute drive. And then when they come out, they go in, they do their thing, they go shopping, they're having fun. They come out and then that's when they experience stalling they start it up they go to take off and then so after hot soap we'll call it that's what you call it in the industry they start experiencing this you know stalling issue intermittently doesn't do it every time might be every you know four or five trips to the walmart or to the store might do it one of those times but not the other four so but it's doing it enough now that they're starting to be concerned about it a little bit want to have it looked at However, you know, every time I've driven the vehicle, naturally it doesn't act up because when you go to the doctors, you're no longer sick, right? Or so it seems anyways. So how do you handle this? Um, there's no, you know, no codes for direction. It doesn't throw an engine light on. The car spits and coughs and, you know, chuggles down to an idle where he's got a two foot drive the thing until it you know eventually clear clears itself up so to speak but having never experienced it myself i'm just going based off what he tells me now there is a host of items on the vehicle that can do that particularly after extended cruise periods so things that are happening during extended cruises you know you've got high purge flow command from your purge valve wherever this goes wherever this line goes here for your purge they can become stuck open but typically we'll set, you know, rich codes, incorrect purge flow codes. The other thing I think of is like your EGR. Your EGR is being commanded quite a bit at that point. They can hang open during a hot soak. Uh, if they were, you know, stuck open when you park the car and create issues. So EGR valve sticking, uh, coked up throttle body shield. So these are some things that I think of. So in this case, you know, I spoke with the customer and says, well, we've driven it. We don't have a clue what's going on because we can't reproduce it. So you can either tell the guy to pound sand and, you know, let it be somebody else's problem, or we can just try to do a couple things. I suggested, let's try some process of elimination. Let's clean our throttle body. Let's pull the EGR valve out and have a look. And then, you know, he'll possibly quite have to go, you know, drive it again and see if anything has changed. So. That was my suggestion, and I'm looking for your suggestion as to how you guys handle intermittents. Of course, the other thing is, too, here, another way to handle it is to, you know, repair it based off previous experience. So the throttle body is super filthy. Not that that's it, but it's something. Uh, and everything that we're going to look at really isn't going to you know, harm anything. It's not a complete waste of time. Uh, I'm not going to unhook the coolant hoses from it. We're going to clean the throttle body right here. Um, we'll get a little tray to stick down here and we'll get our hose out. And then the EGR, a little different on this one. It goes over here into the wire manifold. We're going to unplug it. I'm going to grab a light and see if we can't at least lift it up out of there and have a little look-see. So other things I've done in situations like this, where let's say, you know, we're suspicious this EGR valve is, you know, hanging up again. Mother 
lover. Yeah, baby. Um, you know, say we're suspicious that it's, you know, acting up. What, what's something else you can do? I'll give you a half a second to think about that. That's right. Unplug it. Let them drive it with it unplugged. Say by mother lover. Um, you know, so that's a possibility too. But your your customer would have to be comfortable with, you know, driving with the engine light on. Which most of my customers are pretty chill. They're pretty chill people, my guy. And that's something that I already discussed with this guy. I said, well, let's have a little look at it. This is a stepper motor. No bi-directional control, so I can't run it in and out with the scan tool because there isn't any bi-directional control. At least on my scan tool. Which kind of stinks. It's a very expensive valve. I don't think the ports down here should be. I mean, it's a hundred and seventy dollar valve from Subaru. Yeah, these ports down here are really big, so we don't really have to worry about that. And they look great in there, but you know, a little bit of crud here. Yeah, we can clean it out. Let me get a little pocket screwdriver. Let's see here. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's probably not a great guess. Unless it's getting hot and binding. I mean, it seems to move quite easily. I mean, for what it's worth, we have it out. We'll clean the carbon and junk off it. Make sure it moves nice and smooth. And then, like I say, if we still suspect it, you know, leave it unplugged. You suspect a purge valve, leave it unplugged. Uh, you know, if this thing's acting up about once a week on them, let them drive it for a couple, two, three weeks. If it acts up with EGR valve unplugged or with the purge unplugged, well, guess what? That's not your problem, lady. Back. Uh, maybe. Yeah, let me see if I can find something smaller. Well, I don't have a smaller container. So we're just going to come back here with some diapers. These things are pretty absorbent. These pigments. And then, of course, we always save the old pigments, any of them that you use and aren't fully absorbed. So we'll stick a couple back here. And that'll give us our absorption. And we got some AMS oil. Power foam, it's called. Never used this stuff. I don't know where it came from. I found a can of it upstairs. Power foam. Carburetor and induction system cleaner. Two four show clean deposits, ethanol degraded fuel, gum varnishes. Maximizes horsepower. So let's see. Ooh, look at that. That's fun, huh? I don't know if it works or not, but while we're waiting here, we're gonna give the old EGR a full douche down too. We'll power foam that baby. This AMS oil stuff has a cult like following, so we'll see how well it works in this regard. Maybe it's just a, what the doctor orders here. We'll give her a little twirl around here. If it, oh, right in my face. Doesn't taste very good. If this doesn't work, we'll, we'll go to the OG, the old Birkenbile. 2 plus 2. That stuff will pretty much eat through anything. I think it causes cancers in every state, including California. This stuff seems to be working pretty well. Actually, I'm, I'm using a nylon brush, by the way. And no, just because I have this style brush does not mean I have AR-15 rifles. So, just for the record, it seems that it seems, apparently this is this brush is only used to clean AR-15s because people always give me thumbs up on having these brushes. I bought them because they're on Amazon. They come in a three pack and they're cheap. <laughs> if you want to know the truth, so this power foam. Seems to be working quite well, and it's not very pungent, to be honest with you. Uh, it has hardly any odor, for what it's worth. We're just going to clean off the throttle plate here. Mostly the bore is what we're concerned about. I 
see it's still stuck to the plate here in several spots. So we're gonna whack her some more here with some foam. It's really quite fun to use. We'll do that. Let's get our valve clean. Like I said, we may be totally wasting our time. Kind of, but not really, I guess. Outside of this bell really doesn't matter much. We're gonna be more concerned down inside here and around the panel. More so than anything. Let that soak some more. We're gonna get a lot of comments on whether or not you should push the throttle plate open. If I'm telling you what to do, uh, the answer is absolutely no. Never ever push on the throttle plate. It will ruin your throttle body. So that's what I'm supposed to tell you. And then the other thing I will tell you, speaking from experience, I've pushed open hundreds if not thousands of throttle body plates and I've never had one break. So uh, definitely don't you know, push open the throttle plate is what I would tell you. We'll make sure the edge of it. It's probably easier to get with our finger because that's where it closes. That's where the air bypasses. Make sure it's clean. Sides. I say hooray to the power foam, to be honest with you. I'm not a big fan of using a product just because everybody loves it or think they love it with no proof, but something like this, this stuff works pretty well. And by, by that I mean like some people will use a product simply because it's expensive. They don't know if it works, they just know it costs a lot and they saw it on a race car. You know what I mean? All right, look at that. We'll give her one final rinse of the power foam because it's very satisfying. <laughs> we're gonna squirt here on the EGR. We're gonna finish cleaning our EGR valve. Get my little pocket screwdriver and we'll cycle this thing up and down. Of course, we can't do much inside of it other than let the power foam do what the power foam does. The more you put in there, the more horsepower you're going to end up with. I don't know if that's a true statement. You might want to contact Amsoil about that. Sucker up. Oh, this is kind of like some kind of what it costs sacrilege. We're going to use a BG screwdriver to open this up to use AMSOIL product. Oh man, the world's probably going to stop turning because that would probably be one of their big competitors. BG makes a lot of the mechanic in the can stuff too, you know, fuel system treatments and things like that. Throttle body cleaners. I don't even know where I would have gotten this screwdriver where I would have obtained it from. So we're going to open and close this a few times here. So the other thing I found interesting about this car, I think is worth mentioning, is the EGR monitor was not completed on this car. And I know this guy and he doesn't do any DIY stuff, but I did see it has a relatively new battery this month. So I'm assuming 
that once the battery has been replaced that it just has not run the monitor yet that's my that's my big fat guess because I see it's a brand new battery I'm gonna get another screwdriver we're gonna hold that valve open just kind of hose her out there but look at the difference in that throttle body from using the AMS oil power foam I think the whole throttle body looks clean I just want to make sure the board is 100% clean and it appears to be I am thoroughly impressed that did quite a remarkable job this had some pretty heavy coking on it where typically it would take a lot of cleaning but this seemed to clean pretty effortlessly huh I mean almost to the point like I would probably order some if I ever needed some so that's what it looks like no idea if they still make it no idea how long I had it and no idea where I even got it from so that's kind of weird makes me wonder it does make it kind of difficult to rinse it so we'll leave it leave it at that Anyhow, folks, I guess that's it. Show's over. We didn't really fix anything, but we're having fun. So I gave the throttle body a final rinse. Oh, wow, what good stuff, huh? I'm pretty impressed. I'm a little bit like Shania Twain. That don't impress me much, you know what I mean? stuff usually doesn't but that's that stuff works remarkably well I can't wait to see how much horsepower we've gained I don't know if that's it doesn't say how many horsepower per can that we're gonna you know that we're gonna get from doing this I'm thinking probably probably at least 15 horsepower total probably seven and a half horsepower here and another seven and a half horsepower here would be my guess I could be wrong but that's if I was guessing that's what I would think we want to make sure our o-ring looks good here in the throttle body and it does we'll find our bolts the other thing we're going to do is we're going to check uh, the mass airflow sensor clean that off even though when I drove it when I was watching it fuel trims were spot on the money you know I didn't see any anomalies the entire time I drove it but you never know we're gonna give this guy his full hour and do a couple of things and ship her down the road so unplug that little fella just have a look in the air box make sure there's no rogue mice or anything in here you never know and there is it's got sunflower seeds in it so let's go all the way we're going all the way. Unhook your power steering line. We got your pocket screwdriver for down there. Undo this clip. Push the little donger down, one and then the other. Take this off all the way. There's your air filter. She's jammed full of goodness. A lot of seeds and junk. A lot of seeds and junk down there. Do they have a bird feeder? Get that junk out. I'm gonna knock the junk out of this. Pretty fair amount of stuff loose in there. just reading the directions on that power foam because I see it mentioned something about mass airflow and it said don't get it on your mass airflow and according to the directions it's supposed to be just consumed down the engines it's used as an induction cleaner as as it states in its name induction system cleaner so you're supposed to just spray it in, just like you would use sea foam right down the intake and then you shut it off let it soak I don't know on this style mass airflow if we can even see the hot wire. 
some of these are pretty in case. Oh no, we can we can see both of them there. So they're right down inside this cavity here. They both look pretty clean. I'm gonna give it a little two of mass airflow sensor cleaner. Just to be on the safe side, we'll stick it back together. Uh, why didn't I replace this? The guy does his own service work. Um, so I'm gonna let him you know, do that. He does his own oil changes and all that. He does a little bit of DIY just in that regard. So that's about it. So I'll tell him to you know, get a new air filter. Plus, you know, as dirty as this is, this isn't gonna cause our symptom. So I'm not gonna go just upselling the air filter. You don't wanna be that shop. I see it's got an aftermarket frame. I see it's got, I think he must use, he must get his filter at Walmart. I see it's got a frame oil filter on it also. So on these Subarus, I find that a lot of aftermarket filters don't fit the box very well, at least not as good as the OEM. So when I do these Subies, typically, I will use OEM air filters. They just seem to fit the box much, much better, in my opinion. I know you guys have asked me before, how do I determine what I use OEM and what do I use aftermarket? And this is one of the things I use OEM. I get this over and slide back in there nicely. There it goes. And how do I determine that? It comes from experience, I guess, trying a couple of different brand aftermarket air filters, seeing that none of them fit very well, and then I just default to OEM. I think the Chevy Cobalt and a couple of the other GMs like the Trax, the Encore, some of those I use OEM filters also because aftermarket, again, doesn't fit very well, at least in my experience. So there's that, let's throw this thing back together. So no real point to this video, I guess. Hello oh, man, hearing your thoughts and dreams of what you do. We'll put the fresh air of that PCD hose on there in a minute. Um, but I am genuinely curious to see what you guys do. If, some shops around here just do not do intermittents. That's just, that's the golden rule. We'll fix it if it's broke. If it's an intermittent, forget about it. Um, that's the way all of our dealers are. They spend no time on intermittents. So there's some mouse turds up here. So not to tell the guy, I believe this car gets parked in a garage. So you don't want to put out some mouse traps. That's for sure. And we've got our little spring clamp. I try to deal with intermittents the best that I can. However, you know, I can't be all day driving a vehicle to catch that one second glitch. And then if, you know, try to come up with a plan that can be super difficult. This should have a Christmas tree fastener, but we're gonna put this thing back on there. I don't know if the customer did it or who did it. I would have to assume so. Kind of odd, kind of a pain in the butt too. Hold all this stuff down there. So something like this, you know, if the customer has a good, good story, um, you know, some the data they could collect the best they could. You know, it does this when I do this. We can come up with a little bit of an assessment. That's what we think it might be. I'm tighten that too much. And then, you know, develop a plan like this. Well, is any of this going to change it? You know, we cleaned the throttle body, we cleaned out the EGR, we cleaned off the mass airflow, all viable options, and then let them drive it. If he comes back and says, no, Eric, it still does it once in a while, I'm going to unplug the perch, let him take it. You know, comes back, no, it still does it. We're going to unplug the EGR, let him take it. You know, I'm going to try to kind of narrow it down like that. And then in the meantime, hope, if this doesn't clear it up, hope that it gets worse or at least more persistent, which would be great because then we can, then we can get it. You know, then we can tell them, here's what's going on. Here's how your car is broke. We're gonna let it 
title for a little while. That uh, Toronto. Uh, Subarus when they're cold do have a high idle. Take them several minutes to calm down. I'm just going to go in and make sure we didn't set any codes. We shouldn't have had the battery on hook when I was doing it. Our idle is calmed back down. I'm going to take it for a shake. Again, of course, shouldn't have any codes in here. All right. I went through the active test and special functions to see if we had any control over EGR or purge or anything. And Subaru on aftermarket scan tools are not that great. Uh, almost to a frustrating point, you know, what you can do, what you can't do. And that's air flows working. Like I say, when I drove it, everything, everything looked great. Fuel trims, everything. So, that's it, guys. No, we let you inside for baby. Hi, you want to go in? There you go. Okay, let's see. Go see, mommy. Well, that's it, folks. I think that's all we can do on this car, or at least it's the best that I can do with my abilities and my guessing. <laughs> you know, based on customer symptom, you know, seems to have the problem after a hot soak what can some issues be and how can we track it down. So just kind of treading that out and being that it's so intermittent, it makes it a real pain, which all intermittents are, let's be honest. Um, so I'll be curious to your thoughts down there in the comment section. How do you handle it when customers come in? Do you send them shipping or do you just try to use some logical guessing if it's not too horribly expensive? I don't know. I think each case is different. Case by case is, is different. Um, you know, we try to look at, you know, pattern failures, you know, we try to use all of our resources to, you know, to see what we can do, but sometimes these are the toughest ones to solve. So I'll give it back to them. And what I'll do is, you know, this video will come out before this thing's driven for weeks, I assume. So maybe in like a month or however long it's been, I'll update you. Or if it's, uh, you know, has acted up in the meantime, well, we'll revisit it and we'll try something else and try to kind of keep in touch with uh, this guy and what's happening with the car and just see how lucky we got. Did we, did we guess good? I don't know. But I'm going to guess that you're done listening to me talk about nonsense and you're going to want to go in that comment section. You're going to want to leave the question, the comment, find us on the Insta, the Facebook. You guys know where we're at. And just remember viewers, I can do it. You can do it. Thanks for watching.